We as Christians feel that there is something incredibly wrong with the church today. What exactly, you ask? Christ was baptized into ministry in the wilderness by John the Baptist, but instead of leading from the wilderness, he took his message to the temple steps, condemning the religious authority and the hypocrisy of those in his day. Uh, and, and, and there's a lot of fake Christians in these big $50 million churches with helicopter pads and swimming pools and shopping malls and thumb scanners to get into the church. They're all running around saying, oh no, we're not supposed to fight evil, we're not supposed to warn anybody, everything's great, George Bush is of the Lord, he'll save us, Sarah Palin will save us. You know, there's that delusional church lady with the diamonds all over, and uh, you know, they're not out warning anybody, they're not out fighting the abortion clinics, they're, and, and the world sees those fake Christians, and then, and, and, then, and then that is a bad testament against them, and of course none of that's by mistake. Tell them that God's gonna cut them down. Tell them that God's gonna cut them down. I'm delighted to present my latest book, In Defense of Israel. This book will expose the sins of the fathers and the vicious abuse of the Jewish people. In Defense of Israel will shake Christian theology. It scripturally proves that the Jewish people as a whole did not reject Jesus as Messiah. It will also prove that Jesus did not come to earth to be the Messiah. It will prove that there was a Calvary conspiracy between Rome, the high priest and Herod to execute Jesus as an insurrectionist too dangerous to live. Since Jesus refused by word and deed to claim to be the Messiah, how can the Jews be blamed for rejecting what was never offered? Do we all worship the same God, Christian and Muslim? I think we do. Does. We have different routes of getting to the Almighty. We have different routes of getting to the Almighty. Do Muslims and Jews preach and believe that Jesus is God become flesh? Do they believe that no man cometh unto the Father except by Jesus Christ? Do they? What is being taught, what is being practiced, is universalism. Where did George W. Bush get his obviously flawed doctrine? Perhaps it runs the family. You were both in Skull and Bones, the secret society. It's so secret we can't talk about it. What does that mean for America? The conspiracy theorists are going to go wild. I'm sure they are. I don't know. There are secrets that George W. Bush guards at least as carefully as any entrusted to a president. Secrets he's forbidden to share even with the vice president. Secrets he's held ever since his days at Yale, where in his senior year, like his father and his grandfather, he belonged to Skull and Bones, the elite secret society whose members include some of the most powerful men of the 20th century. All Bonesmen, as they're called, are forbidden to reveal what goes on in their inner sanctum, the windowless building on the Yale campus called the tomb. It's so secret we can't talk about it. You can run on. Spend most of the month of July encamped on some 2,700 acres of pristine and privately owned redwood forest. Forest very much like this. The place is called Bohemian Grove, and it's located just 80 miles north of San Francisco. The Grove is the Bohemian Club's summer retreat, and its facilities are hidden beneath lush forest canopy extending south from the banks of Sonoma County's Russian River. For more than a century, the camp has been a place where club members and guests from all across America gather to relax. The retreat is divided into dozens of small camps, the most prominent of which is called Mandalay. Among its members are businessmen like Leonard Firestone and Edgar Kaiser, and political figures like Gerald Ford, Henry Kissinger, William French Smith, and George Shultz. President Reagan, Vice President Bush, and Defense Secretary Weinberger are members of other camps. Richard Nixon is a bohemian, and so are high-ranking executives of such companies as Eastern Airlines, Standard Oil of Indiana, and Bank of America. Shall have its will of thee. Beyond all care, and all the winds that bury with thy dust. Hail, fellowships, eternal flame. Once again, midsummer sets us free. <laughs> One 
one of the facets of the ritual that goes deeply into the occult. And we've already mentioned the druids at their bonfires or bonfires throwing throwing bodies into fiery pits after ritually cutting their hearts out or slitting their throats. They talk about reading the sign in the burning effigy, reading the sign. Again, research your history books on the occult, even the Encyclopedia Britannica on what the Druids would engage in. Uh, this is just unbelievably macabre and evil. That's right. Do not marvel that all of the world's elite are bought and paid for by the synagogue of Satan. Christ warned us that these things would come, but what does our enemy have planned? For your family and your church. If martial law were enacted here at home, like depicted in the movie The Siege, easing public fears and quelling dissent would be critical. And that's exactly what the clergy response team, as it's called, helped accomplish in New Orleans. Uh, Jeff, the primary thing that we say to anybody is let's cooperate and get this thing over with, and then we'll settle the differences once the crisis is over. Such clergy response teams would walk a tightrope between the needs of the government versus the wishes of the public. In a lot of cases, these clergy would already be known in the neighborhoods in which they're helping to defuse that situation. For the clergy, one of the biggest tools that they will have in helping calm the public down or obey the law is the Bible itself, specifically Romans, Romans 13. Because the government is established by the Lord, you know, and, uh, and that's what we believe in the Christian faith. That's what's stated in the scripture. Romans 13 tells us to obey powers, but if you read down it in verse, verses 3 and 4, those powers are to be ministers of God to our good. That word ministry, it means deacon. The government itself is to be a deacon to glorify God and edify the good of the people. If it ceases to do good, it ceases to be righteous government, and then we are required by God's law and His commandments to resist that evil by all means necessary. And, and Bush, the whole Bible, I don't know where to start, is about people standing up against evil. Uh, again, uh, the whole Bible is written on the, uh, on the Nehemiah chapter 4. It talks about uh, resisting evil. Uh, in the Old, Old Testament, Christ, as your uncle said, told his disciples, Luke 22, 36, to buy a sword. That wasn't for slicing cheese and cleaning your toenails. That was for fighting with. These are things that are clearly wrote down in the scriptures, and people have got to quit listening to these mamby pamby pulpit pimps. They're getting paid to, to, to tickle their ears. And understand, we're here to fight evil. We're here to expose it and fight it. Paul wrote Romans 13 from prison. Why was he in prison? For obeying Caesar or for disobeying Caesar? Ladies and gentlemen, we're here in Canada today to stand up against the Bilderberg Group that is attempting to get rid of the sovereignty of the United States. The truth of your world government has now been exposed. We know you are ruthless. We know you are evil. To David Rockefeller, to the Rothschild representatives here, to the Queen of the Netherlands, to all of you, we tell you, you are not our queens, you are not our kings, you are not our gods. We do not belong to you. We are not your slaves. We stand as free humans, as stood since the beginning of time, against the strong men, against the thugs, against the bullies. We will defeat your world government. We will defeat world taxation. We will defeat your control grid. God is on our side. I stand before the creator of the universe. And I ask the creator of the universe, as our founding fathers did in 1776, to lead, guide, and direct us, and to give us the power, and the foresight, and the understanding, and the will to stand against your entire agenda, including your final plan of world population reduction of 80% that Henry Kissinger penned in 1973. Why do you put mercury in the vaccines, stannous sodium chloride in the water? Why? Why do you put cancer viruses in the vaccines? Why have you used depleted uranium now in four separate nations? You're arrogant. You have the sickness that elites have had throughout history in their literal and, in some cases, figurative ivory towers. You believe that you're invincible. You will and you are failing now. Your new world order will fall. Humanity will defeat you. The answer to 1984 is 1776. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. 
Sooner or later, gotta cut you down. Sooner or later, gotta cut you down.